amazing. Simply amazing. How could anyone do anything like this these days? Automated security, impenetrable insulation lockdowns. Because they still find their ways around these things. Officer Carlson, I thought I might find you here. Greetings, Al. Welcome to the scene of the crime. You know I prefer to be called Ellen, Mr. Carlson. Ah, yes, of course, Ellen. Have you ever seen anything like this in your life? No, I can't say I have. It kind of makes you wonder how secure we really are these days. Have you found any bodies yet? No, we haven't. Fortunately, the building was vacant at the time of the explosion. Well, at least that's something to be thankful for. Those automatic lockdowns sure saved a lot of lives. When we arrived here this morning, the bottom floors of the building were entirely destroyed. Those support beams you see over there are the only things that's keeping the top floors intact. Well, I must say, through all my years working for the UBI, I've never seen anything that matches up to this. That makes two of us. Uh, sir, uh, we've been able to locate and recover the localized computer surveillance unit. Good work. We've been working on this for quite a while. Come on, Al. Follow me. I'm going to show you it. My name is Ellen. Ah, forget it. It sure has been a while since the last time we worked together. Sure has. Do you remember our last assignment together? Of course. Just like the back of my hand. We busted that drug lord and got a stash of heroin. Man, there's so much there, it took three trucks to cart it all away. I guess you don't look at the back of your hand very often. We were checking Bank Larson in our last assignment. We were. I mean, of course we were. I must have been thinking of my other hand. We never did catch him, did we? No, we came close, but we managed to slip away once again. I don't think there's any way to catch him. Well, in any case, this is the unit right here. You call this a professional recovery? Hey, given the circumstances, this is the best we could do. Now, can you get anything out of this or not? Yes, I should be able to get some information out of it. I just need a table or something to put it on. Around the corner, there should be a conference room. Go and find a table, and I'll meet you over there. Will do. Officer Carlson, are you coming? Yeah, hold on, I'm coming. I found a table we could use. Just put it down carefully, please. <laughs> Why do we get a feeling this shouldn't have happened? What are you saying over there? This incident, this should not have happened. There's plenty of time for someone to intervene. Why didn't anybody do anything? Officer Carlson, if you're speaking of what I think you are, you had better stop right now. You know as well as I do that we're not supposed to breathe a word of that to anyone. I know, but can't you feel it as well? Yes, I can. But this still doesn't mean we can talk about it freely. In any case, let's stay on task. According to my scans, this is the only data unit left in the entire installation. Somehow a state of one piece. However, all the data retrieval ports are melted shut. So the only way we can retrieve the data is to project the live video footage onto the wall and take note of what we see. So get ready to take some really quick notes because we're probably only going to get one shot at this. Alright, let's go. If we have to watch the entire data stream, this could take hours. Yes, but unfortunately our only other alternative is to increase the frame rate. If we do that, we risk overloading the fragile system. 
But then, of course, I suppose if we don't, the system could give out before we're able to see anything. Okay, I'll increase the frame rate then. Ah, great, just what we didn't need. What are we gonna do now? <sighs> the UBI isn't gonna be very happy about this. That was our last piece of evidence. The only other option at the moment is to turn eyewitnesses, and I don't think there will be too many of those. Officer Carlson! Look, the, the unit just kicked that guy. Looks like we're gonna get another shot at him. The time is 9 o'clock. The rocket integration of Cybernetics Corporation IOTA installation is now closing. Anyone left inside must leave now before the automatic lockdown begins in 5 minutes. I think it's safe to say that unit's finally had it. I don't like to assume too much, but I take a wager that that man we saw was our suspect. We better get this information to the UBI pretty quickly. What the heck was that? Things can make me wear what he tells me to like I'm a slave or something. This chickenish outfit don't even fit me. Man, if Rika can buy us off all this high tech junk, it should at least get its employees some outfits that actually fit. Vix! Vix, you there? Yeah, I'm here, Wedge. What do you want now? Where are you? Master Blake's been looking for you for hours. You were supposed to report back to Rico a long time ago. Well, you know what? I'm pretty sick of this. 
You can tell Blake that he can take his reports and pr Whoa, Vix? Whoa, hello, what happened? Hello? Oh, what's going on over there? Hello? It Is this thing on? What's that noise? Is someone there with you? Hey, where'd you go? Sorry about that. I dropped the telecommunications device and it wasn't working for a few seconds. Everything's fine here. Oh, okay. Well, I suggest you get back to Rico now. Blake's gonna have your head on a platter if you don't return. Acknowledged. Vix out. I require valid ID. Adequate clearance to let you pass. Vix Pierre, eh? You were due back here a long time ago. What took you so long? Caught up in traffic, sir. You can never get nowhere with this horrible traffic problem these days. So many people running here and there and never get nowhere. It's unbelievable. Now, can I get in? Blake's gonna be fuming mad if I don't show up. He already is fuming mad. Now get in there quick before Blake starts accusing me of making you dawdle around. You didn't think it'd be that easy, did you? Come on, Pink. They'd have security against a keycard. They must have just changed their entry system. Hold on, I got more stuff in my backpack. You know, you guys should really keep it. That We've got action in the rear entrance. Let's move, people. There's one more. Where is he? Kill the lights. So I says to him, hey, that's my graviton sequencer you're messing with. <laughs> 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 then get this, then he goes and storms out of the store with nothing in his pocket and a queer look on his face. <laughs> I tell you, it was, hey, it's Sid. Hey guys, been a while. How's it going, anything new? So what's going down, Ray? Well, nothing much. Town's been pretty quiet since you left MD hunting a few days back. It was a fire down the street a few days ago, but it was just a small trash can fire and was extinguished before anything got burned up. Well, come on! What you got this time? <laughs> By the looks of it, looks like you got yourself the mother load. Let's just say these past few days have been quite, uh, plentiful. Fourteen of them in just two days. Two days! That's the most I've ever gotten in one hunt. If I keep going at this rate, I could get like a uh, 50 weekend, uh, 180 a month. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, that would be 196, Sid. 49 multiplied by 4 is not 180, it's 196. Right. So, the great Jeff Brain strikes again, eh? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I must have gotten to carry the one. <laughs> <laughs> You do know that studies have proven that laughing at a person that has acquired a higher intelligence index is an undeniable sign of acute idiosity and lack of self-appreciation. Acute idiosity, huh? Well, I suppose that would make me an idiot! Alright, Jeff, you wanna go, little man? Uh, not particularly.
Oh, you'd rather just throw insults in my face, huh? Rondo, some brawl music, please! Holy cow, Sid's gonna fight Jeff! Hey, I, I said I didn't want to fight. Oh well, too bad. <laughs> so the big and bad Mr. Staren can't even stand up for himself. <laughs> what a surprise. What the? Oh man, you okay? What the heck was that? Whatever that was, Mr. Skywell, it made your first loss. And you know the rules here. The loser of an entire tavern brawl must play for all damages, private and public. Oh, Rick, it's horrible. I only have two days to pack up my things to leave, but at this rate, it would take more than two weeks to carry everything away. It's not fair, I tell you. It's, it's, it's all just not fair. I know it's not fair, but we really can't do anything about it. Rick, wh why is this happening to us? I don't know, Karen. But just remember, no matter what anybody does, no matter what anybody says, or no matter what happens, you will always have a place in my heart. Come on, let's go inside and I'll see what I can do to help. Well, there's a room over there with a the very, very expensive, uh, delicate equipment that's going to be torn down in a moment. Karen, calm down. Do not let your anger get the better of you. You know as well as I do what will happen if that should occur. I'm I'm sorry, Rick. I I just I just can't leave my house. We're both going to have to change, Karen. We're both going to have to accept what is happening to us. You go clean out your room over there. I'll carry the boxes on this end to the car. What do you suppose we'll do about your solo farm? We'll need to hire a company to dismantle it correctly. Uh, that might be a problem. The land that my solar farm was on was taken away by Rico. 
They got it through a waiver of ownership from the International Property Claim Society, somehow without my written consent. I don't know how they did something like that, but uh, I t it just doesn't make any sense. But that's not my property anymore. A waiver of ownership? Hmm. Huh. Well, surely the IPCS informed you of this, d didn't they? No, Rico Agencies waltzed up to my house one day and said that they now own my land, and I was told nothing prior to then. They just took it from me. That's it. I've just about had it with Rico shenanigans. They screwed up your life, they screwed up mine, and I am sure they're not going to stop there. I'm not going to sit around and let Rico get away with this. They've never done anything useful for anybody that I know of, but they sure have made quite a few people unhappy. I'm going to go teach them a lesson or two about karma. No, Rick, please, stop. Karen, get out of the way. For your safety, get out of the way, please. Rick, calm down and listen to me. Just a minute ago, you told me to keep my temper under control, and here you are letting yours control you. We both have the same problem, and you know that. I know you, Rick. If you go up against Rico in the state you're in right now, somebody is going to end up being killed, and it will probably be you. Rick, just a second ago, you stopped me from doing something I was going to regret. Now let me do the same for you. Karen, uh, I've never told you this before, but I used to work for Rico. In fact, I used to hold a very high position in that industry. But then, something terrible happened, and I lost my memory of everything that went on there. Karen, there is some dark secret behind Rico. They are using the world for something. I don't know what, but I have to find out. Taking your land is not just some spur-of-the-moment idea of theirs. They are trying to do something big. For my sake, for yours, and for the rest of the world, I have to go up against Rico. You'll always be in my mind, Karen. Vix Pierre, report to Master Blake's room at once. Hey Vix, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be in Blake's room? Oh, I was just checking out the shafts over there. Sure are neat, aren't they? <laughs> you used to think we should replace them with turbo lifts a few days ago. He said to me, Wedge, you know, those elevators are really trashy. I wonder why you changed your mind so suddenly. By the way, what happened when your radio went out a little while ago? I was getting worried that something might have happened to you. You know, getting hit by a car or something. Well, I was patrolling the streets when some punk teenager tripped me. That knocked my radio off to the side and I fell on top of it, shutting it off or something. <laughs> that kid got a taste of my good old Vix 1-2, if you know what I mean. He learned a lesson he'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, you've always been known to pick a quick fight, eh? Well, be sure to tell Master Blake that you whipped that punk good when you report to him what happened. Maybe he'll grant you some better uniform, eh? Hey, where are your shoulder guards? Um, they didn't fit correctly, so I sent them to a remodeler to get them fixed up. Eh, makes sense. 
Now get up to Blake's room before he skins you alive. You know how mad and crazy you can get when you don't listen to him. By the way, you've heard about that terrorist guy, Ben Clarson, before, haven't you? No, I don't believe I have. Why do you ask? Oh, I've heard rumors that people have been seeing strange flashes of light from time to time around Zion, and even some rumors that they've seen a man that suddenly disappears from sight and reappears in a different location. I've heard that this Larson guy has real futuristic technology that allows him to become invisible and stuff. Now, you've never heard of him before? Yeah, watch the news sometime. After you go to Blake's office, of course. Speaking of which, you better get over there. Vix Pierre, report to Master Blake's office at once before you are charged with insubordination. Welcome, Vix. Please, sit down. Vix Pierre, how long have you been working at this installation? Uh, I lost track a few days back, sir. <laughs> hmm. The computer's voice recognition system is not matching your voice with the recorded voice of Vix Pierre. Why could this be? I've been suffering from a sore throat recently, sir. Mr. Pierre, you were assigned to report back to the installation nearly four hours ago for a meeting with the security personnel and myself. That meeting has since passed, and obviously I would like to know why you did not show. Well, sir, you see, some punk tripped me on the street today, That's and I... Enough. I only wanted to verify your story with that I picked up from Wedge's audio implant. It seems odd to me, though, that I didn't pick up your story, or any of the brawl with the punk, for that matter, on your audio implant. It seems to me that you have a different idea on your mind than patrolling the streets. Sir? Listen. This chickenish outfit don't even fit me. Man, Rico can buy himself all this high-tech junk. We should at least get its employees some outfits that actually fit. Insubordination and imminent mutiny. That is a direct violation of Rico protocols. Vix Pierre, you are hereby demoted to assistant marine. You will work in the boiler room and clean every corner of that place until it shines like polished chrome. You will also take orders from anybody that has any rank in a RICO installation, and you will obey all orders without question. Do you understand? So, did it get chewed up big time? Uh, I guess so. I'm now an assistant marine. Assistant marine? <laughs> I guess Blake was fed up with all your renegade ways and all, eh? <laughs> so, I guess that means I outrank you now, eh? Let's see. As an assistant marine, you are required to follow all orders given by anyone with any Rico rank, correct? Well, I suppose that means you can clean up my quarters then. I know my cot could use a nice cleaning and my floor could use a nice going over with some polish after it's cleaned off. You made me scrub your quarters once, remember? 
Well, it's time I get my turn to be the uh, boss. Well, here. I'm heading down to the boiler room at the moment. And Blake wants me to spit shine that place and all. So, I'm sort of busy. Uh, uh, uh. As an AM, you have to follow all orders given by anyone with rank. And that includes me. You will do the cleaning right now, and when you're done, then you can go to the boiler room. Here it is. You will clean this place up until I can see my floor from any location. And when you're done, I'd like some coffee. Black with a hint of sugar. Nah, forget the coffee. I'll just take a nap in my room instead. Yeah! What the heck is this? Hey, what up? We got breaking in Sturgeon 14. Jason Cotterson and Ellen... Nothing more, just Ellen. Alright then, Jason Cotterson and Ellen. The information you have given to me is quite invaluable. It is the only piece of evidence we have about the assault on Rico Iota. From the great notes you took, Officer Carlson, we were able to extrapolate some possible suspects of the bombing by localizing their cubicle locations relative to the blast. We figured that it would take just about three minutes to get to the room you saw the suspect break into, running at top human speed. Therefore, it must have been one of these people who had their cubicles at the right distance from that door. They are Drew McAdams, Sylvia Stein, Quentin Arch, Sarah Rosado, James Uligowski, and Frank Brenta. Now, since you said that the suspect was obviously male, that leaves us with Drew, Quentin, James, and Frank. Quite impressive. We're already down to four suspects already, and Jason and I haven't even looked at them yet. We could have narrowed it down to one by checking to see which employee never signed out to leave the installation in question, but all of the following did. The suspect must have somehow slipped his ID through the sign-up computer or something and falsified his exit from the Riku installation. Furthermore, he must have been wearing some sort of shielding, otherwise the motion detectors would have picked up his biosignature. But back to these four. Do any of them look close to what you saw in the surveillance footage?
It would definitely have to be one of these two, Quinton or Drew. They are both relatively similar to what we've seen in the footage. We were never able to get a clear shot of the suspect's face in the video footage, but these two look pretty close. Hmm. By the information here, Mr. McAdams called in from his cubicle with a case of instamatic solar myopia that day. So it is highly unlikely that he could have maneuvered his way through all those cubicles to the door in the darkness. Do you catch my drift? Yes. So that means it must have been... Quentin Arch? I remember him. He, I, and some other guy, uh, I, I can't remember his name, but we were all in the same college exploratory unit many, many years ago. Our CEU was assigned to collect data on a freak tritium spill in the 5th polar region of the Apalachic Ice Flow. I remember Quinton jumping out of the ATS Tyler Line car when we arrived, scanners in hand and a wild enthusiasm in his eyes. The other person with us then got out and mentioned something to the ATS intercom about how to make the tether line cars operate more efficiently. Oh, now I remember. His name was Jeff Starin. Oh, he was the smartest person in our college. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the smartest person on Earth. So, do you think his Jeff character knows anything about Quentin? Well, probably. He was always great at remembering things. He probably still remembers Quentin's CEU assignment. I'm pretty sure he's living in Antara right now. Why don't we go and get a hold of Mr. Starin then? He would be a great asset for discovering any other information before we infiltrate Quentin's hideout. Hideout? What the heck are you talking about? What do you about? mean, hideout? What makes you think Quentin's hiding from us? Just a second ago, you didn't even know it was Quentin. And now you're positive that he has a hideout? What, what do you think you're trying to do? We got word from an unknown tipster that a man matching Quentin's description was seen running into an abandoned warehouse. The tipster then said that the warehouse suddenly changed shape, and armed guards began to control the entrances. I wasn't sure if that was the truth, so I wanted to see if by logical deduction, you two could come up with Quentin as a suspect. I myself still don't believe what the tipster said was true, with the building changing and all that, but nevertheless, I would like to be cautious about it. That's why we're going to plan an infiltration. Well then, who the heck was this tipster? Funny you should ask. I was in my office this morning doing some investigation on this very terrorist attack, when all of a sudden some man appeared in front of my desk. I didn't hear the door open or anything either. He looked like he was tired and worn out, and he seemed to emit some sort of weird aura that made my skin run cold. He began rambling about how the assault on Rico Iota was supposed to be a great thing, but upon reflection he realized that it should never have happened. He explained that he saw our Quinton character run into the warehouse and so on. Then he started mumbling something about a great mistake and temporal pressure or whatever that is. I looked down at my papers to get a clear sheet to write all this information out, but when I looked up again, he was gone. He also mentioned the name Jeff Sterling. I was able to pick out the word imperative after he said the name, but before I could ask him what was going on, he disappeared. So it seems that Jeff is imperative to this mission for whatever reason. But anyway, we must take action and fast. Ellen and Officer Carlson, see to it that Jeff Sterling is brought to this UBI building as soon as possible. <laughs> check. What the? Checkmate. Another game? Good afternoon, Miss Murray. How are you and Bill today? Just fine, thank you. We were just heading to the grocery store. 
What brings you to the park? Uh, it was a great day, so I decided to come out and read up on some physics. I also figured I might as well get out of my house, because I've been doing some really tough studies. Physics? Yeah, physics. You know, temporal physics, quantum physics, uh, astrophysics. It's, it's all really interesting stuff, in my opinion, anyway. There's so much to be learned from math and science in general. It's just all the keys to our reality and all the secrets of our existence are all curled up in there somewhere. Just have to figure out where. Like, uh, take this book right here, for example. It talks about temporal quantum gravidynamics. These people are saying that time and possibly even other dimensions, I suppose, are all part of this interplay with the reality on this level that we just can't comprehend. There's just so much to know about our reality that we cannot Gee, that understand. sure was a mouthful. And you know what? You sort of lost me after you said quantum physics. <laughs> yeah, I started to lose myself too on occasion. I'll just be thinking about something and just... Whoa! What, where was I? I'll just more or less start over from the beginning because I have no idea where I... By the way, where's Bill? Oh, he usually wanders off into the park and finds some place to sit when we pass by here. I, I wouldn't really worry about him. He's probably in his makeshift treehouse he made by himself over... Oh my dear Bill! Excuse me, sir. Did you see what the heck just happened here? Yes, sir. There's a child in the middle of the road, and the car almost hit it. I guess it tried to steer out of the way and ended up crashing itself. Well, it's a good thing that that madman's finally off the road. He robbed two banks, held up a supermarket, and tried to run using an illegal supercharger in his engine. On top of that, he's got handfuls of outstanding warrants and fines. It's about time we got him off the road. I'm glad nobody got hurt. But, Jeff, yes, that's not what happened. You... Excuse me, but Jeff Starin, you need to come with us. Whoa, wh what? Hello, Mr. Starin. Long time no see. Yes, yes. long time no see. Oh man, what is this? This is another drill or something? You know, I really wish they'd stop doing all these stupid tests. And right in the middle of my coffee break, too. I mean, what the heck is that? Security team Epsilon is stationed. We have a negative intruder alert in the storage room. I repeat, a negative intruder alert. Yeah, the window over here is all broken up, so that's probably what set off the alarm. Yeah, it's probably just some kid's tort plane or a, or a bird or something that smashed a window. Yeah, that must be it, because they were taking out all those old sensors and putting in the new, uh, what, particle phase compression or whatever that is sensors. Let's get back down to the station. Yeah, no use hanging around here. Boiler room floor. Ah, 
Ah, you must be VXPI, I presume? And you are... Russell Johnson, you know. I've been working down here forever. I thought you at least know that much. Oh, yeah, now I remember you. Russell Johnson. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I, I remember now. Uh, your name must have got confused with some others. Now, Mr. Pierre, as my assistant, you're going to follow every single one of my orders without any complaints or nothing. Master Blake wanted this to be punishment, so I'm going to make it a living nightmare for you. So your first task will be to clean all of these grungy pipes with a toothbrush. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. I've got a big scrubber here for you. Jeez, you sure aren't gullible, just like they all say up there in the overworld. Yeah, that's me, Mr. Gullible. Yeah, <laughs> I like your style, Vix. I think we'll make a great team here. Yeah. Well, you should get to work so you can get to your lunch break. I don't know how you can work without so much to eat, you know. So the faster you work, the sooner you can eat, right? If you've been needing something, I'll be right over here for you. I'm going to be setting up some wiring for the new particle thing thingbajig security systems the installation's upgraded to. Just give me a holler so you need something. Hey, was that you, man? Hey, I don't hear too many pipes getting cleaned over there. Ah, uh, trying to sleep on the floor, eh? <laughs> Come on, get up. There's work to do. Sorry, but I got my own job. One move and you can kiss your head goodbye, Rico scum. You must be mistaken. The Rico scum you're looking for is behind me on the floor. Wait a minute. I've seen you before. You're Bank Lawson, aren't you? Nobody knows who I am. Not even the general that defeated you in the Great War of the Falcon? Rick Progen? I see we're on a first name basis here. The war is over, Pinhead. What are you doing back? Just being a disgruntled employee. The question is, what are you doing on this continent? That's none of your business. Ah, oh, they set up the alarm. You know, standing here bickering is not going to get either of us to safety. Look, I don't know and I don't care why you're here. But I do know that you're just screwing everything up. So get lost before I kill you like I should have during the war. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be sworn by Rico Guards again. Now, I can get us both out of here safely if you want to cooperate. What can you do? There are three ways out of a Rico boiler room. The stairs, the elevator, and the emergency exit. Obviously, the stairs and the elevator are out of the question. The emergency exit is always disguised as a storage closet. How do you know all this? My car is right up here. If you want to come, we can both get out of here. Nah, I think it's more of an old one model. They didn't make these kinds of cars during the 2100 century celebration. Well, it's obviously one of those new ones made after the Ford and Dodge merging. Because it carries a Ford Dodge logo. Yeah, I remember when that happened. 
Ford was making awesome cars, but Dodge had the cutting edge technology. So they merged, producing gems like this one right here, and turned the automobile industry inside out and upside down with those hover jet engines. Yeah, and I heard that Saturn and Toyota are thinking of merging as well. You've got to be kidding! Yep, the Ford Dodge merging spelled the downfall for a bunch of other auto companies, including Saturn and Toyota. So to prevent themselves from going out of the market, they are considering a merging. Wow, I never knew that. And I thought I knew cars so well. Ah, I hope whatever's happening inside is alright. Sounds like the fire alarm or something, but I don't see any smoke. Maybe it's a drill? Oh, this is one of those new Singularity cars. Oh wow, I never would have been able to tell seeing it here with all this junk all over the place. Jeez, by the looks of it, the driver of this thing drove straight to the wall there. I'm surprised the car didn't crunch up like an accordion. Must have had some body armor or something. Hello, boys. Outdoor security to the channel. There we go, coast is clear. Hurry up and follow me to my car. With any luck, it should still work. I don't get it. Why haven't we been detected yet? Oh, we've been detected, all right. But I know how to get around everything. I'm sure glad I invested in this body armor a few years ago. <laughs> the only thing that's keeping his car intact. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get the heck out of here. Sounds like a plan. You know, you should thank me for getting the body armor. The only reason I followed you was because... What the heck just happened? Oh my... Gosh. What? I, I did not just do that, did I? Oh, th th this can't be happening. Th this is a dream, right? No, this is definitely real. Were you gonna chicken out on me or something? No, I I, I can't explain it now. Uh, well, the only way to get out of this hole is just to go deeper. What the heck is your problem? You are in danger to the lost of civilians. Stop your engines now. Hold them inside of the road. Oh man, how do I get... Ah, so they finally come after us. Come on, Bake. We're going for a ride. Whoa, hey, we got company now. Whoa, don't touch your window, I'll still be able to see in. What good is this gonna do? We're just gonna get stuck in sign traffic. Then we'll just take the best credit bridge. Target is only one way to go, and that's straight forward. Let's take him out now before he can get off the bridge. Copy that, Theta-1. Initiating force pattern, 7-2 out from now. Hey, do you have any idea what's going on behind us? It looks like they're trying to get into some sort of formation. Don't worry about it, I can handle it. Wait a minute, doesn't this bridge go over the entire side of Metropolis? Yes, it does. That's it, we're getting out of here. Hey, what are you doing? Just keep driving, I'm gonna get these guys on protect. Something just got out of the car and disappeared on the roof. Everyone, fall back! Holy sh... Get us out of here now! Hold on to your seats. Hmm. Interesting. Let's get out of here.
Hello, Jeff. Nice to see you up and about. Ellen, I never thought I'd see you again. But what happened? Where am I? You're in a UBI building close to Antara. We brought you here when you passed out. Oh, that's right. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't remember anything that's happened within the past. Uh, I don't know. What time is it? It's going on 5 o'clock right now. 5 o'clock? And I, I've been out all this time? Yes, we put you on the couch over there to rest. How's Miss Mori and her son doing? Are they alright? They're fine. Miss Mori was a little shaken by the ordeal, but she's recovering quite well. I don't know what happened after that car incident. I guess I just freaked out or something. I don't remember anything. We believe you passed out due to high levels of neural stress at the time. You must have been extremely tense there. I guess so. Well, what am I doing here, anyway? I'm sure you've heard about the recent attack on Rico Iota. Yeah, I read in the news. We believe we have found the attacker. His name is Quentin Arch. Quentin Arch? The same one from our CEU? It seems that way. We have video confirmation and an eyewitness account linking Quentin to the attack. No kidding. Huh. I wonder why Quentin would do anything like that. It's not in his personality. We don't think so either. And that's why we are going to place him under temporary arrest so that we can interrogate him. So what do you need me for? We brought you here because we are going to need your help capturing Quentin. Your mission begins tonight, and your briefing is on the pad. What? W why do you need me in a UBI mission? Well, Jeff, there are many reasons. One of which is, you and I are the two people that know Quentin the best. We were all in the same CEU. If we know him so well, chances are we'll be able to find him a little easier. And second, you are very intelligent and could get us out of any, uh, tight situations should we run into any. Somehow I don't think those are the real reasons. Well, Jeff, let me be honest. The UBI has specifically appointed you for this mission, and it's illegal to turn down such an appointment. You don't want to go to jail, do you? I guess not. It's not exactly how I want to spend my evening, though. And besides, you won't have to pay taxes for the next two years. No taxes? Well, come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Yeah, I had a feeling you changed your mind after I said that. Well, be sure you read over your mission briefing and report to the rally point on time. I'm sorry I can't personally go over this with you. It's against the UBI protocols for whatever reason. I still don't quite understand why they do that, but eh, rules are rules, and I don't want to get in trouble either. A strategic strike against a fortified building? I thought we were just going to apprehend Quentin Arch. Ah, hello again, Mr. Stone. How are you doing? Just fine. I just need to relax for a little while. What would you like? The usual? Yes, please. You know, Jeff, you are allowed to drink alcohol. The prohibition was repealed about 200 years ago. And besides, you can get orange juice at the store anytime you like. Yeah, I know, but the orange juice here is so much better than that synthetic stuff at the store. And anyway, the taste of booze bothers me. By the way, that was some fine whipping you dealt Sid this morning. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes, I couldn't. Twas it some sort of gun or something? <laughs> Never in my life have I seen anything like that, I haven't. Let me let you in on a little secret. I'm actually a wizard from the Dark Ages. <laughs> ah, you're one tricky lad, yeah. Well, Sid's friends offered to clean up and chip in to pay for the damages after you left, so we got the place looking pretty much back to normal in no time at all. <laughs> Seems everyone forgot about it though, because soon after there was another fracas here between two old guys who were playing back in. <laughs> now doing all the attention to it did. I tell ya, it's been one hectic day here at Az. <laughs> You're telling me.
Hey, Brain Boy, what's that? M Mr. Skywall, uh, what are you doing here? Why'd you sneak up on me like that? I didn't ask to play 20 questions. I asked you what that was. It it's uh, uh, nothing. Uh, hey! Aha! Hey, give me that! I think you've got a lot of explaining to do before I give you this back. What do you want, Sid? You know, you really got a lot of balls to come back so soon. I had to pay nearly $250 for my hard-earned cash to clean up the mess you made earlier My today. mess? You instigate and create the mess, and then you say it was my fault? I didn't start nothing. I was just talking to my buds about my latest hunting around, and then you come and start saying how all my math is wrong. I was merely correcting a mistake. Do you really think I care if I can add? Actually, you made a multiplication error. Shut up! You know what your problem is? You think just because you're so dang smart, you can go around with your nose in the air and show off to everyone. Correcting some math is hardly showing off. What did you do to me today? I performed a second magnitude order of multicellular agitation to geoscopic image composition, using the potted flower as a conduit to transfer ore into a quasi-physical energy form which I directed to your general vicinity. Great! Now you're just spouting jabber in my face. You really are messed up in the head, aren't you? Why don't you just fess up and apologize for all the money you cost me, huh? Blab all you want, Sid, but you can't hide the fact that you're just a jerk. So, it seems like you enjoy hunting for ethereal terabas, eh? Ethereal ter- what, what the heck are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, you cool hunters probably wouldn't understand. The name Mind Dweller is really a layman's term for ethereal terabas. Those are those creatures which you catch for your sick games and hold in those little canisters. Hey, hunting ain't no game. Hunting for MDs is a life or death sport. I've almost got myself killed a few times hunting for them. Do you know how much resistance they can show when you try to catch them? Some of them can pick up giant boulders like little toys and chuck them at you faster than you can dodge them. Others can summon storms that drop lightning bolts on your head or send twisters tearing through the battlefield. I've heard tales of the ultimate mind dweller, a huge dragon-like creature that's known to have killed dozens of hunters with a single swipe of its claws, with a bill of flame from its mouth. <laughs> oh no, this ain't no game. This is life and death. And do you ever wonder exactly why they try to kill you? It's because they don't want to be sucked into one of those little canisters. They'd probably rather die than be imprisoned in one of those things. So what am I supposed to do with them? Let them run free in my house? Some would like that, yes. But most would rather be back in their natural habitats, their home just like any free-living thing on this planet. But some of them, just a few of them, will live in your mind. Why? What's that supposed to mean? Y you're messing with my head again. Stop it, will ya? What? You thought the term Mind Dweller was just some silly name? <laughs> the reason the laymen of the world term Mind Dwellers as such is because they can live in your mind. They have neurogenic states. You know what that means? They can live like us as physical beings, or they can take up residence inside your mind as a neurogenic... But I learned that they were called MDs because they were like the figments of children's imaginations. Like the monsters that live under your bed or whatever. Like the boogeyman. They're just monsters in your mind. But these ones are real. I've known that for years, and now you want to tell me that there's some other meaning in these things? Why should I believe you? Since when are you an empty wizard? Take the time to actually talk to your ethereal terabus someday, and tell me when you figured it all out. Then you'll see that you can live in relative harmony with your mind dwellers, as you call them. And then you'll finally discover, deep inside yourself, your true being.
Why am I still in this car? Because I haven't stopped driving, and you haven't said a word since we left Sion. I must admit, that was some good shooting up there. How did those weaker cars not see you? Well, you probably use your refraction vest, eh? Still need to be in bright light for it to work, huh? Look, I don't like you, and you don't like me. But right now, we're in a rather awkward position. If we part ways, then each of us will turn the other in, and we'll both end up in jail. And that will do neither of us any good. If we fight, we'll both end up dead. So it is in my best interest, and yours, if we cooperate here and figure out what we're going to do. You can do whatever the heck you want. I'm going to go finish my mission. Unlock the doors. Now. You know I'm not going to do that. Dang it, unlock the doors now, before I kill you right here. You weren't able to kill me in the wall, even when you had weapons and an army behind you. Why should I be afraid of you now? So where are you taking me anyway? I'm bringing you to my place. It's hidden, it's safe, it's secure. We'll be able to stay there until we resolve the situation. So you live out in the middle of the desert, huh? No, first I have to stop and pick up Karen, my fiancé to be. Your girlfriend. Uh, yeah. Bank, I need to go in and talk to Karen, and you're going to come with me. Please, if only for Karen's sake, don't try anything, alright? Let's just pretend for a little while that we're on the same side. I'll do my best. Hello, Karen. We need to talk. I'm so glad you are right, Rick. I was worrying about you all day. I was hit by the trance twice today. It seems to be getting worse. You didn't happen to stumble across a cure for it today, did you? Of course not. I've been packing all day. Everything is pretty much good to go. Just need to load it into your car and take it to your place. Who's that, anyway? He's someone I picked up along the way. It's getting sort of chilly out here. Why don't we go inside? So, what is your name? It doesn't matter who I am. What matters is that I shouldn't be here. R Rick, who, who is this anyway? Don't worry about him, Karen. He just came along for a quick visit. Look, I didn't choose to go with you. You just happened to be the only way out. If it weren't for me, you never would have made it out of there alive. Stop it with your broken record routine. I was perfectly fine until you came along and screwed everything up. Whether you like it or not, you are in my custody now, which means I call the shots. Don't make me have to use my authority I gained from the Great War of the Falcon. Falcon was a nothing war. You Europeans just wanted to stop the political squabbling I was going on in Rondar, so you invaded. We invaded? You Rondans instigated the whole thing with those simultaneous embassy bombings. I don't know why you think strapping a bomb to your waist and annihilating yourself along with countless innocents can get anything useful done. I'm not a Rondon. I'm from the Republic. I just happened to be a Rondar at the time. What? How could you be from the American Republic? They have so much surveillance here that they catch someone like you weeks before you began your terrorist ways. And yet here you are, a lauded war general who just committed a terrorist act of his own. I'm... I'm not a terrorist. I just want answers. Answers to what? My family. Almost ten years ago is when it happened. I was visiting my brother and my folks at her old house in the country. I was only 19 then. 
As a matter of fact, I was staying over for the night to celebrate my 20th birthday. I moved out of the house when I was 17, so being with my family was such a privilege for me. I remember how I came in the house with all the balloons strung out across the living room, and all the birthday cards piled on the table, and a single present wrapped in sparkling silver wrapping paper just for me. I loved my parents, and they loved me too. Although, they taught me never to place my trust in others' hands, and are very adamant about their doctrine, they loved me very much. I think I tore their hearts out when I announced that I was moving away to live on campus at Kyleton University. But I returned for my 20th birthday, and our three-year void was finally filled. I also had a brother, Lucen. He was my twin. We both had the same body build, the same facial hair, same taste for steamed spinach, and the same longing to be famous in our adulthood. We used to go out to the local market together and confuse vendors into thinking they were selling their wares to the same person, and that person kept changing his clothes somehow in a matter of seconds. We had a bond we did. I wish I could see him again. On the day of my 20th birthday, we were all gathered around the table, Mom and Dad, and Lucent and I. I blew out all 20 of my candles on the cake, and there was a cheer for my folks. It was more of a ceremonial procedure than a test of skill to blow out the ever-increasing amount of candles as my brother took it as. And I was about to open the silver wrap present, when all of a sudden... I wonder who that could be. So, Bing, how's it feel being 20? I'm coming. Yeah, I could ask you the same thing. Hey, what the heck is going on? Oh my, what, what's going on? Listen, wh what's going on? Shut up, just get underneath the sink, and whatever happens, don't come out. Search the house for Ben Clawson. Use whatever means necessary, but they want him alive. Hey, you want some of this? Come on, bring it on! Do not kill him, we need him alive. Are you alright? You haven't said anything for quite some time. You've just been standing there, staring into space. I'm fine. You don't have to worry about me. I'm going to go out and wait in the car. I know the trance gives us weird mood swings, but that's the biggest personality change I've ever seen. What's wrong with I him? don't know. Mr. Lawson has quite a few loose screws up there, but those loose screws might be the only way we can gain his trust. How did you know he wasn't going to shoot you? He was out of ammunition for that gun. I really don't know why I helped him, Karen. We were bitter enemies in the Great War of the Falcon. Why, why should we be friends now? I, I truly cannot explain it. But something tells me that we need his help. And I am certain that he really needs ours.
Are you ready? Okay, get in the car. I'm sorry we had to drag you into this. That's alright, I guess. I don't know, is it? Do you have any UBI training? Have you ever fired a gun before? I didn't think so. It's gonna make things difficult. I still don't understand why you need me. I mean, why not get someone who's fully qualified, a trained personnel that can handle this kind of stuff? I'm just... I'm just a bookworm. I'm not a commando. Jeff, I could lose my job for telling you this, but in the interest of your safety and well-being, I think you should know. We got our information from an anonymous tipster, as you know. But what you don't know is that he mentioned your name. He mentioned the name Jeff Starin. I thought it was bizarre too, but the UBI president felt that since the whole situation was weird enough as it was, she'd find this Jeff Starin and include him in the mission. I'd rather you didn't go either, especially since the mission was just formulated today, rather hastily if I say so myself. But an order's an order, and neither I nor you have authority to dispute. Uh, I see. Well, uh, I suppose it kind of makes sense. Well, <laughs> Weird things sure have been happening recently, so I wouldn't doubt my being here in this mission has some sort of cosmic significance beyond my comprehension. <laughs> Maybe I'm just going crazy. Well, you better make sure your head's on straight, because when we get to that rally point, you're going to need to think clearly. Welcome, Jeff. Nice outfit, Officer Carlson. Sorry, my uniform doesn't double as a raincoat like some people's. Well, Jeff, you're in our undercover recon post right now. These are our computer experts, Riven Holch and Laura Opnus. Yo. Welcome, Mrs. Starin. Elinus told me a lot about you. So I hear you like computers. I love anything that deals with technology. Well, you better, because we're going to be using it tonight. We've only got a little while before we gotta get started here, so you might as well get familiar with all these devices, cause you're gonna be using them all. It wasn't very funny, Riven. Well, at least I'm trying here. Riven's still unsuccessfully trying to be a comedian, eh? I'd love to sit here and chat, but Riven's right. The mission is about to commence. This is your codebreaker unit. You're going to use it to open any locked doors we should find in this place. The red switch on the back activates the EMP. Use it if and only if I tell you to. It is a very potent device that will disable anything electric, and that includes Ellen's sensor jammer. So if we have to use it, we will have to escape as soon as possible. Alright, battle stations dudes. We've got 20 hundred hours and guard shift change commencing. Karen, do you read me? Yeah, I'm here. The guards are switching position. And I got my tracer all ready to go. I just have to wait until one of the guards is walking into the building before I fire the tracer. Oh, wait a sec. I think you all guards are heading in now. Okay, I've got a clear shot. Tracer fire. Five, four, three, two, one. Haha. <laughs> Master Hilo, to find Everman is target. Good, our first phase is complete. The next phase is to get the blueprints of this building. Riven? Already on it. The tracers function perfectly. Scan for the camera transmission frequency now. What are we doing now? Once that tracer hits on the frequency used by the building's security cameras to transmit their messages to whatever central security system they might have, we'll be able to use that frequency and tap into their visual security network. Then all these monitors will light up and we'll be able to see every nook and cranny of the building. It gets even better. Using all the security footage, we'll be able to extrapolate a blueprint of the building using program Riven designed. 
Then we can plan the safest route to where Quentin Arch is. Where are we at? 1.24 gigahertz and still nothing constant. Now, there's one thing that's still unclear to me. Why don't we just use some scanner or something to check the building's interior instead of having to go through all this work? I know things like that exist. I've even used scanners like that before to perform checks in my house when I'm away somewhere. Our first idea was to probe this building from afar using global positioning satellites, but all we came up with was some blue fuzz. Then we tried using more localized devices, but we still got some weird sort of static. It's not a dispersion net, because we know the static pattern of those when we use GPS on them. This is some sort of futuristic technology or something that we have no way of penetrating with conventional methods. 2.91 GHz now, I'm starting to pick up slight traces of fragmented video signals. So anyway, we think that there might be more futuristic technology inside this place. So that's another thing we're going to want to check out when we're inside. Who knows what ha, we could got find. it! 3.07 GHz, frequency band 6. Calibrating our monitors now. Good work, Riven. Get that blueprint program running now. L, help me look for Quentin Arch. It's Ellen. Ah, never mind. And so, this crime happened just last night, and you already have a suspect on a mission to apprehend him? The UBI does not hesitate to find suspects when an attack on Rico is involved. Either Rico has a very strong tie to the UBI, or the UBI has a very strong tie to Rico. I, I don't even know. But, <laughs> I can tell you one thing for sure. Today sure was a busy day. Tell me about it. I've been through a lot today. A tavern brawl, a near-death experience, saving a little kid, now this. I wonder what else is going to happen. It's nearly 2100 hours. The guards are going to do their routine door check within a few minutes, so we'd better get moving. Alright, let's get this over with as soon as possible so we can all get some sleep afterwards. Good luck, guys. We'll be watching you from here. So, we just wait here till the guards begin their check, right? Yes. Our team back at the recon post has a camera lock in this position, so if something odd should happen, they'll contact Officer Carlson through his earbud. Speaking of earbuds, they just contacted me a second ago. He said it seems the guards in this place use cameras and sensors in their helmets identical to the ones we have tapped into. So our center jammer should shield us from their vision as well, and we won't have to worry about having to hide from them or anything. It'll save me from having to use my rifle too much as we work our way to Quentin's room. Speaking of which, are you sure you remember the way we're going? Laura will drag me through my earbuds should I forget. Then, of course, I never forget.
Man, when's he gonna get that channel opened up again? Mr. Arch, sir. The hourly report shows all functions are operating within normal, accepted parameters. That's nice. But do you have any idea when the heck that lazy bag of metal is going to open up the Omnitime channel? I've been here for two hours longer than I need to be. I've acquired the plans like you wanted, and I've constructed the devices you wanted, but I can't hide out here forever. I was not informed of any time specifications regarding the channel. I can only assume that he has a legitimate reason for his tardiness. Blah, blah, blah. Tardiness, tardiness, smartiness. One of these days, I'm going to catch him making some dumb move, and he's going to squirm as I rub it in that he made a mistake. Maybe today will be my lucky day. Maybe so, sir. Ah, finally. There's a distortion rift heading this way. Uh, seems that he's finally getting his mechanical button gear and opening a channel. Well, anyway, thanks for guarding this place while I waited. It's been a pleasure working for you, Mr. R. What? How did you get in here? Why wasn't I warned? Now, Mr. Arch, either you come quietly now, or we make you come quietly. <laughs> 